Okay. So I wanted to make a video on the single most important uh, point regarding meditation or spiritual practice or awakening. Um, and that's the the existence that we all share the awareness that allows us to experience reality or the consciousness that allows us to, to be alive and uh, whatever means that we can use to connect with that um, will bring us closer to our true nature and when, when people talk about the true nature what they mean is the awareness that allows all of reality that is essentially us um, so awareness, consciousness, being, existence, life all refer to the same thing and the thing is, is basically that which perceives reality um, that which is aware of reality, that which is aware of itself as conscious or alive or awake. Um, which is a constant, which is always there. And is overlooked when we excessively focus on the the narrative, the, the, the ego, the story, the individual or the limited self uh, of this individual life. Um, and I think it has to become, connecting with that has to Or, or knowing that has to become so real that it's more real than the fiction of the personal story or the ego. Um, it's understood or realised to be the, the, the nature of reality that exists and always exists beyond the story of the person. that's it being aware of our being or knowing our awareness and these are these are words that we, we hear all the time and these um, from uh, spiritual teachers or people that talk about pardon me to talk about uh, this subject of awakening. Um, I think the the important thing is the, the recognition of that, the, the conscious recognition of that um, in our own experience. Um, through our own experience. With 
as much direct clarity as possible to reveal our, our true nature to us. And usually that involves letting go of or seeing through the seeing through of the fictitious limited sense of self or the ego not getting rid of but seeing through as an illusion um, or as a, as a limited part of reality a very limited um, ultimately illusory part of reality not the ultimate reality and in my, in my, in my case I'll just give my own experience it, it took making a habit or making a hobby of connecting with that in some way or knowing that in my daily life to the point where it became so obvious so much more real or so much more obviously real than the story of the, the self or the person and in my case it took I'll never know if this, this is how it worked but it seemed, I remember it being the forming of a new habit through practice and, and repetition and remembering remembering my true nature who I am beyond the, the story of the person um, and connecting with just that being that alive awareness um, consciously um, in daily life and it has the characteristics of a kind of spacious empty stillness um, in the background, initially in the background of all manifestation and that gradually becomes louder and louder over time um, I can't remember where I heard this but someone said the silence becomes louder and I thought that, that worked really well at the, describing it until it comes into the foreground um, and all of reality is experienced as that not as an addition to <clears throat> or something that can be connected with from time to time in the background but it comes into the foreground and is, is realised as the fundamental reality um, of life and then it becomes so obvious and undeniable that there's no longer any doubt there there's no longer any practice, you just settle into being what you are and all the effort falls away the practice doesn't exist anymore um, the effort there doesn't exist anymore um, the effort to move away from the person uh, it becomes more of an effort to maintain the belief in the story of the person than it does to um, relax into your own being. And I, I, I think for me all it took was... And I think it did take practice in the beginning. It, there was a practice involved relatively and an effort um, but then when you see that the effort belongs to the person it just flips it just switches over and, and, and then it's backwards <laughs> and the, the effort um, disconnects from the practice of awareness or presence or being and can see that it, it wasn't ever like that and it just always was the way it is completely effortless um, 
kan hmm. And the inquiry techniques and so on are are, are useful, but when you truly rest in your own being, uh, when you're aware of yourself as awareness, there is a an intelligence there, an effortless. It's not a concentration, um, although can be seen as concentration from the point of view of the person um, but it's also a relaxation like an expansive um, thing both at the same time because the person has to concentrate to know something but our true nature knows itself anyway so there's no concentration there um, There is a an intelligence, an inquiring intelligence there that, that works through you um, naturally um, and effortlessly. So I, I think in, in some people's cases the inquiry is is uh, very useful, but ultimately, in my experience, the the inquiry is just a, is a tool to connect us with um, our true nature, and if we can remain as our true nature, then the nature, the true nature of reality, will will naturally reveal itself without any effort. Um, at least, at least that, that's how it worked in my case anyway. Or at least that's how it's working. Um, but the most important thing is to connect with our own being. Um, in life. All the way through life. Just here in the, in the present moment, let's say. Um, and it, it goes beyond I think um, you know I think some some people will have a meditation practice that they will sit down and they will, they'll delegate themselves or designate themselves a, a time period to um, sit down and meditate and inquire um, but there comes a point where that that limitation or that practice that, that designated time frame isn't relevant anymore um, because there's no there's no set there's no difference between um a state of meditation and everyday life um you can see that this this practice is based on the mind this sitting down to meditate um is a concept um the that points to something, and the, the inquiry techniques are also a concept um, of the mind that, that points to something which is useful for the mind. Um, but ultimately, becomes irrelevant at a certain point. Um, everything becomes irrelevant. we're left with is just our experience as awareness our experience of our awareness of our own being um, 
without the limitations of the concepts of the mind or the forms of the mind. And whatever means that we can use to to rest as that, to rest in our own being, to be ourself. Um, just exist effortlessly. Um, initially, is I think very dependent on the, the personality and, and the, the individual. But ultimately, it all ends up in the same place. It's not really a place, but um, it all ends up the same. So it's, it's not worth worrying about uh, techniques and methods and different approaches. Um, they, they all point to the same thing. They are all the same. But I think the most important thing for me was to remember who who or what I am. Remember that I'm here, I exist, I'm aware, I'm conscious, I'm alive. And that I is shared with everything else that seems to be separate. It's all actually the the one awareness. You're the one being, the one presence, the one consciousness, intelligence, existence. And when we rest is that gradually the boundaries and separation will naturally become revealed to be illusory from that let's say understanding or point of view and it doesn't really take some from that point of view it doesn't really take some sort of special technique or inquiry or um, meditation to to access it, it just is the way it is anyway and that's always the way it's been we're just letting go of the attachment to and seeing through the illusions Anyway, that'll do for now.